everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. Today we are going to make this cute little beret just in time for the spring or the fall if you're on the other side of the planet. <laughs> it's complete with a cute little pom-pom in the center middle. And I used self-striping yarn. In fact, I used a Karen Cupcake for this project. And if you'd like to see our review on the Karen Cupcake yarn, you can check that out. We'll put the link in the description box down below, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about that particular ball of yarn. I think it worked out to be a really cute little hat. In fact, I think this, this beret looks like a cupcake itself. So, without further ado, Grab your cupcakes, grab a hook, let's head on over to the craft table and we will make ourselves up a cute little beret. In order to make our berets, you're going to want some lightweight size 3 yarn, around 80 grams of it. Today I'm using a Karen Cupcake for this project. It comes with a cute little pom-pom which I will be adding to the top of my beret um, so if you're using a different lightweight yarn and you want to add a pom-pom you're going to need one of those as well. You're going to want a measuring tape, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. We're using a smaller hook today. This is a 3.75 millimeter or an F5. You can also use a 4 millimeter crochet hook for this. And you may need some stitch markers. I have eight of them here. These are some safety pins. Um, so you may want to have some stitch markers on hand to help with the increasing in this pattern. And once you have all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And into this circle, we are going to single crochet eight. Once you have eight single crochet in your circle, grab your little short tail and cinch the circle shut. We are working in the round for this project, so we are not going to join our rows with a slip stitch. We are always going to work directly into what is the first stitch of the previous row. So this is row one. You have eight single crochets into it. We're going to work directly into the first stitch for row two. So this begins row two. I'm going to work over my short tail, but you can leave yours to the back and weave it in later if you're more comfortable with that. We're going to continue with single crochet, and we're going to single crochet two stitches into each stitch around. So two single crochet into each stitch, and at the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. At the end of row two, you should have 16 stitches all the way around. And we're going to work directly into what is the first stitch of row two. That becomes the next stitch we work into that begins row three. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of row three or the next stitch all the way around. One single crochet into the next stitch. And that's the repeating pattern for row three. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that. So two, one, two, one, all the way around, and at the end of row three, you will have 24 stitches. At the end of row three, you should have 24 stitches, and we're going to continue increasing by the ever-expanding circle method. So last row, it was two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that. For row four, it is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next two stitches before you repeat the pattern. So two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then repeat. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next two, and so on. At the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. At the end of row four, you should have 32 stitches. For row five, the increased pattern goes up by one again. So we work two single crochet into the next stitch, which is the first stitch of row five, and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then you repeat the pattern all over again. Two single crochet into the next stitch, that's the increase, and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. 
So every time you work two single crochet into the same stitch, that's considered an increase. And then the single crochets you work in between are just sort of what expands the circle. So if you can look at it that way, then it's an easier way to understand how to make the ever-increasing circle. And once we're finished row five, I'm going to show you how you can use your stitch markers as an easy visual way to know where you're at and where you need to increase. At the end of row five, you should have 40 stitches. And now I'm going to show you a neat way to use your stitch markers if you have trouble seeing or counting where you need to increase next. So like I said, an increase is where you've worked two single crochet into the same stitch. And you can see that that's two. They sort of sit like a little V. Their little bottoms meet in the same stitch. And obviously at the end of your last row, the very first thing you should see to begin the next row are a pair of stitches that are the increase, sitting in a little V like that. So, if you take your stitch markers, or in my case, I'm using safety pins, and you mark the first stitch, so I'm gonna mark the first stitch in that little pair of stitches, this first stitch of each pair is the increase, or where you wanna work your increase, which is two single crochet worked into the same stitch. And if you travel around looking for those, there it is, there's the next one, the next little pair sitting with their little points meeting in the same stitch. I'm going to mark the first one in that pair as well. You can run around your entire circle and you should have eight little increases or eight little pairs where you can mark the first of each set with a stitch marker. When you're finished adding all of your stitch markers, and each one should be sitting on the first of the two stitches that sit together in one stitch from the row previous, so you've marked where you need to work your increases, you should have eight evenly spaced stitch markers around the outside of your circle. So if you're using the visual increase method for an ever-expanding circle, every time you come up on a marked stitch, you work two single crochets into it. If you're using the counting method, you know that we're beginning row six, and that means two single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next four stitches. That will bring us up to the next place where we need to work an increase. Visually, we've got it marked. So this stitch is marked with a stitch marker. If you're doing the counting method, you know that this is just the next place where you work two single crochet. So the increase is worked on the stitch that is marked, or if you're counting for row six, it's two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then single crochet into each of the next four. However you like to work an increasing circle, whether it's to mark your increase places with your stitch marker or count, you want to work an ever-increasing circle until the diameter measures approximately between 9 and 10 inches or 22 and a half to 25 centimeters across, so that's the diameter, for an adult, or about an inch or two and a half centimeters less in diameter for a child. And once we get to the end of row six, I'm going to show you where to put your stitch markers so that if you're working on this visually, you know how to move your stitch markers along. At the end of row six, you should have 48 stitches. And you'll know you're at the end if you're using the visual marker method because the next stitch marker you come up to is actually a row below where you need to increase. So you'll notice that the actual increase has moved just to the right of the original marked stitch. So you can see that there's my two stitches that were worked into the same stitch in row six, and they're sitting just to the right of the marked stitch. So if you're using the stitch marker method, you can pause at the end of every row, and take out your stitch markers, and move them up to mark the new first stitch in that set so that you have a visual of where you need to work your increases all the way around. If you're good at spotting the sort of what I call the twins <laughs> sitting together in their little stitch, then you may not require the stitch markers, especially if you can keep track of where you are and you know that you need to do eight evenly marked stitch increases in each row. 
So if you find, however you find using these stitch markers works best for you, then I recommend using that method. But ultimately, you want eight evenly spaced increases in every row. And every row is going to increase by a count of eight. So at the end of row seven, you'll have 56 stitches. At the end of row eight, you'll have 64 stitches. This is basic multiplication tables from row grade four. <laughs> Um, but every row will increase by eight stitches. So if you're using a hook that's a slightly different size than mine, or a yarn that's a slightly different weight than mine, you know that your ever-increasing circle needs to get to a diameter, this, this measurement here, right across the center from side to side, you need a diameter of between nine and ten inches, or seven and a half and eight and a half inches for a child. So a larger dimension, di sort of diameter for an adult, slightly smaller for a child, and it doesn't matter, therefore, if you're using yarn that's not quite the same size as mine or the hook. Also, because our stitch tensions differ, then that also gives you a bit more freedom. So you need to work this ever-increasing circle until you get to the right dimension, which will be that diameter measurement, and I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. I have finished 17 rows of increasing. So my final stitch count is 136 stitches. That's for an adult. And my diameter, so the diameter of my hat, is about nine to nine and a half inches, or around 23 centimeters in diameter. So that's good for an adult. If you're making this for a child, uh, 15 rows of even increasing um, should probably be enough, so long as the diameter of the hat is around um, so between seven and a half and eight and a half inches. So about an inch um, to, or two and a half centimeters less than that for an adult. Um, if you've got some rippling, don't worry, you can flatten it down with your hands and a lot of that rippling will disappear once we turn it into the rest of the hat. Uh, but when, if you're done your project at the end and you still feel it's a bit ripply, you can steam block it or just toss it in the wash and let it lay flat to dry and that rippling should disappear. So don't worry about any rippling. At the end of row 17, I have 136 stitches. Um, whatever the end stitch count you have is, so maybe you needed to add a few extra rows to continue getting the diameter you needed, or maybe you ended before I did, your final stitch count should be divisible by eight. That's how you know you worked eight even increases all the way around for each row. But to be perfectly honest, the final stitch count doesn't matter so long as you have a nice even looking circle. And like I said, don't worry about any rippling you may see. Once you've got the right dimension, so the diameter of your hat is the, the measurement that you need to get to, you're just gonna stop increasing and then work two rows of single crochet. So work single crochet in every stitch all the way around, we're not increasing anymore. You're gonna work two rows of that and then I'll catch back up with you. Once you've finished two rows of straight single crochet, you want to put your stitch markers back in around your hat at eight even intervals, because now we're going to begin to decrease. So you can take your stitch markers, so there's where our last increase was, there's the twins, two rows below. Your stitch marker would have been sitting on the first of those two. You can boom, boom, move it up on a slight diagonal um, to the stitch in this row, so this is two rows of straight single crochet. You want to do that all the way around so that you have eight even places where you're going to decrease. And every time you get up to one of these stitches that's marked, you're going to work a decrease. A decrease is two single crochets worked together. So you pick up a loop in the first stitch, which will have the marker on it, and you pick up a loop in the next stitch, and then wrap and pull back through everything. That's single crochet two together, and that is the decrease that we're using for the rest of this hat. Then you just single crochet as normal all the way up to the next stitch marker, and then you single crochet two together across that stitch marker. All right, I've worked single crochet all the way up to my next stitch marker. So there it is here, it's marking this stitch right here. I'm gonna single crochet two together across the stitch that's marked. And then I'm gonna continue just straight old single crochet right up to the next stitch marker. So you're going to decrease by working single crochet two together at every single stitch marker around your hat. 
that should be eight decreases in total. So your final stitch count, let's say for me it was 136, is going to go down by eight stitches. So that'll bring me down to uh, 128. 128 stitches at the end of this row. But whatever your final stitch count was, you just subtract eight from it because you're working eight decreases, and that'll be the new count in your next row, or the first row of decrease. Once you've finished your first row of decreasing, so you've worked a single crochet two together every time you came upon one of your stitch markers, and you get back to the beginning, you can identify the single crochet two together, that's the one I started my decrease row with, and you can move your stitch marker up to it. So you can take all of your stitch markers out, and move them up and mark that single crochet two together stitch. And then once you've done that, you can continue decreasing. So every time you get up to that single crochet two together from the previous row, so here I am, there's my single crochet two together, you're going to single crochet two together across that same place from the row before. So you want to take a moment and move up all of your stitch markers so that you're marking your single crochet two together. Now if you can eyeball it, so every time you get near one of your stitch markers you look at it and you can tell that that's the single crochet two together, just remember that's where you start the decrease for that row. So you start the decrease of single crochet two together in that stitch. And then just like all the other rows, you just regularly single crochet in between each of those stitch markers. And this is how we begin all of our decreasing rows. You're going to continue to decrease eight stitches per row until your beret fits on your head. So you're going to want to do this for a few rows until that space starts to close and then you're going to want to try your hat on. You don't want to make this too tight so that it doesn't want to sit on your head, but you also don't want it too loose that it won't stay on your head without falling off. So this is where a lot of sort of personal sizing comes into play. I'm going to give you the basic rows that you might want to decrease down to, just so you've got sort of something in your head. But for the most part, um, you're going to want to try this on as you go. So I've come up against my next stitch marker. So if I don't move the stitch marker, I can still see it sitting there. I can see that's where my single crochet two together of the previous row was. So I'm going to start my single crochet two together across that spot. That's the second one of my second row of decreasing. And I'm going to continue. So there you go. You want to now decrease evenly eight times every row until the opening of your beret fits comfortably on your head. Not too tight and not too loose. And once I get down there, I'll tell you what row I'm at. Okay, I've been decreasing an even eight decreases per row for nine rows now. The opening of my hat is approximately six inches or 15 centimeters across. So in diameter, that's what the opening is. Now it's got a lot of stretch and I've tried it on and it fits over my head. So the opening of this will fit over my head. So you wanna make sure that this fits comfortably around the back of your head. It's not too tight or too loose. And if you're making this for a child, I recommend decreasing for nine rows like I've done. And the opening should be somewhere around five inches in diameter. So if you open it up a little bit, you should look at, it should be about five inches across the opening. So once your opening is to the size that you like, you're going to grab your hook. You don't need your decreasing stitch markers anymore, so you can take them out or just leave them there until you're finished. And now you're going to work a few rows of single crochet just straight. So you're going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for at least three rows. And I say at least three because what we're doing is we're creating a bit of a band that's going to help our hat stay on our head. And you may need a thicker band, um, you may not need a thicker band, but I say work single crochet for at least three rows and try that. And if you feel you want a bit more, you can add a couple more rows of single crochet at that point. But work three rows of straight single crochet now and I will catch up with you at that point. Once you've finished three rows of straight single crochet, try the hat on again. If you feel you need a little more hat band, so when you pull this on over your head, you feel like it's just not deep enough, then you might want to add one or two more rows of single crochet. 
I'm probably going to add a couple more rows of just straight single crochet here and then I'll be finished. But like I said, this is a very personal hat, so you want to try it on. And if you like the way it looks on your head, just with the three rows of single crochet, then you can stop there. But if you want it to be a little bit wider, this is sort of the hat band, um, and this is what's going to help keep it on your head. So if you have a lot of hair, you might want to make this a little bit wider. Uh, so add a couple more rows, but not too many because the, the beret is sort of like a, a light little hat and you don't want too much of a thick um, edging to it because it'll sort of change the way it sits and looks on your head. So one or two more rows if you need it, otherwise you can pause and just wait <laughs> till I add a couple more rows here and I'll catch up with you in a moment. Once you've finished all of your extra rows of single crochet, and I've done five rows in total of just straight single crochet since my last row of decrease, you can simply slip stitch into the next stitch and then fasten off. You can grab your yarn needle and you want to weave your tail in to some of the stitches, so back and forth across some of the stitches of that last row you did. Once you've finished the bulk of your beret, it's time to add the little detail to the top middle. So I'm going to use this pom-pom that my Karen Cupcake came with, and I'm just going to use the, both the threads that are on it to tie it to the center top of my beret. So I'm going to run one tie down on one side of the center of my beret. That's one. And then I'm going to run the other tie down the other side. Then I'm going to tie it nice and tightly. I want to make sure that it's not going to flop around. And I'm going to tie that a couple times just to be sure. There we go. There. And then I'm going to just weave these little tails in um, just a few times back and forth on the underside of some of those stitches just so that they don't really go anywhere and they're not hanging out. But I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to weave it back and forth a few times. Since I know I knotted it down pretty tightly, I'm not too worried about this coming undone. So back and forth. I'm going to do this for both ties a couple times and then I'm just going to trim the rest. That's enough. There we go. And now I'll do the second one. And once I'm done, I might give it a little light steam blocking just so I can lose some of that rippling. Um, and it'll be ready to wear. And there you go. One beret. The perfect, cute, trending little hat to make just as we head into the spring or the fall, depending on what side of the planet you're on. And that's it for this week, everybody. I hope you enjoyed making this beret along with me. And if you'd like a written copy of this pattern, you'll find one in our Etsy shop. And you can check out our Etsy shop. We'll make sure the link is in the description box down below. And we will see you soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody.